And I commend the Honourable Member for Llanetli for securing what is a really important debate because, like other Honourable Members, um, the importance of having this debate was highlighted on Saturday when in Port Talbot and in Newport steel workers um, um, marched um, in, and we all marched in solidarity with the workers, the unions, who I praise for their work. Um, and there was a lot of strong political support there on both of those marches, including um, my honourable friend uh, from Newport West. And we should never underestimate just how difficult a time this is for these highly skilled workers and their families. And I'd like to point out to the Minister that the average um, age of a steel worker in Llanwyrn is now 34. So these are people who will have mortgages and families to support and, and I know it will be true of um, my honourable friend for Port Talbot, Aberavon. Um, in my time as an MP, I've seen year after year just how workers in Lamwern have repeatedly had to adapt and innovate to keep the business alive and I really pay tribute to them for that. These are really <coughs> well paid jobs and as we often say for every one job in the plant there are an estimated to be three more in the wider community and I'm sorry that the government and the company have put them in this position and we feel deeply for them and we commend the unions for all that they're trying to do because this is a bad deal for steel. We need the best deal for steel, not the cheapest deal for steel, which is what the government are doing. And no matter, as uh, the Honourable Member for Carmarthen said, no matter how the government dress it up, they're giving 500 million to Tata to make up to 3,000 people redundant, 300 in Lanwern. And in doing so, are effectively ending the history of making virgin steel, the only country in the G7, the G20, to do so at a time when we're just going to need this deal to build our green infrastructure and at a time of global insecurity we will be reliant on imports. The Secretary of State for Wales claimed on Monday that closing the blast furnaces will make us less dependent on imports when he knows that Tata will have to import steel shipped in diesel fueled vehicles from uh, vessels from India. As the Welsh Government's Economy Minister Vaughan Gethin has said, the Government is alone in seeking to propel the steel industry off a cliff in this way. In the Netherlands, in Sweden, in Canada, we see governments working in partnership with their steel industry. And rather than rather than contemplate the multi-union plan, the government are not contemplating the multi-union plan which promises a fairer just transition to a greener future for the sector. The government cut, shut the Welsh government and unions out of decision making on this and then the Secretary of State has claimed that those um, proposing credible alternatives to protect jobs and virgin steel making for the future are unconstructive. Plans his Conservative colleagues in the Senate backed in a vote very recently. And then we have the Secretary of State for Business and Trade who called plans to make up to 3,000 people redundant a good news story. Mm. We're now in the third week of the formal consultation period and ministers continue to signal it's a done deal. Will the minister confirm today that she'll not undermine this consultation and she's still willing to engage constructively with Tata and the trade unions should opportunity for an alternative approach arise? Will she also set out whether she's had assurances from Tata that the consultation will be given as much time as it needs beyond the 45-day mandatory minimum if necessary for a path forward to be agreed. There's still little detail available about how the funding available to the transition boards was planned to be spent. Can she elaborate on this and confirm whether steelworkers, supply chains and communities which may be affected beyond Port Talbot, including my own constituency, will also be supported? It, we've had 12, we've often said this, but we've had 12 steel ministers and 14 years of inaction with this government vacating its role as a champion for our um, steel industry and a green industrial future. It is this party that's filling the void of that ambition by committing to accelerate the three billion green steel fund to invest over the next five years in the future of our sovereign steel industry. I just strongly urge the government to look again at this deal and if they won't step up and look again, I think they should step aside and let us have a government who will. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.